Good evening and welcome to uh, the Harlem Studio Fellowship. I'm with Gianni Moretti, who's um, going to show us some interesting sort of uh, pre-fresco techniques that uh, uh, that uh, employ a, a pigmentation use that's um, that render these these very natural sort of um, almost silhouette-like images of um, deer and rats. Well, yes, it's it was a research. Tell, I'm sorry, you started to tell me earlier about uh, about this. Th this actually harkens to something that you found in the Renaissance in the 15th century. Yeah, exactly. It was a technique used by um, using the 15th century by the the artists before the fresco, and they realized this kind of drawing that they used as a trace before the. Um, the fresco technique and then it was interesting for me to you know to work on this kind of technique because no one else but the artist was able to see this phase of the work and then uh, it was interesting because it was very you know it was in a, um, it was almost hidden in a in a hard history and it was interesting to show this work which is not which is not really properly a long time because uh, in this case I do this kind of work directly on the how is the it wall. that you how is it that, that you found uh, this technique I mean was that something that you you were very interested in well uh, sort uh, of? I think I was um, I, I heard about this technique when I was really young when it was my in my my school and then after months after years I I started to work with pigment with powder because it was really good for the work for my work for my uh, for what I want, I intended to to talk uh, through my my work. Mm -hmm. It's not just a way to um, a method to, to take a technique or uh, and do it again now, mm -hmm. but it was make sense to 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 take this spe specific technique which is lost in time, and do it again now and do it in the right the same way they they did in the past. And especially because, uh, for example, when I do an installation like this one after the after the installation after the show, I just Destroyed completely, and then I do it again. And in, uh, in another these works space. perish with each show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When and I finish the show, I destroy it, and I just cover it. Do you have a, a, a kind of a cartoon that you trace over yeah, the? Yeah, exactly. I prepare before it. It takes a very long time because at the beginning I do a research on the subject, mm -hmm. and then I realize these big cartoons where I make holes, and then I use these big cartoons to. Uh, I put it generally. I put it directly on the wall. And then I use this pigment, this black pigment, mm -hmm. to realize to, you know... Um, you fill the holes in with... Yeah, the exactly, with the pigment, and the mm -hmm. pigment just stay on, on the wall, but the most part just is just fell down. Why the deer and the rats? Because I, I made this research about uh, this town, this New York City, mm -hmm. and since I arrived I, I was surprised and very interested about... Uh, that the quantity of mice I found, uh, but especially because I found uh, studying mice and rats, mm -hmm. I realized how many points in common there are in between the, mm -hmm. the mice and the people. That were infested with them, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I talked with a scientist. The city's mascot. Yes, exactly. Somehow, yeah, it can be. But, and on the other hand, I used uh, the deer, the deer body, because it was really interesting for me and because um, it was very close to the, to, the, to the body of city because deer has this pair of uh, horse that's every... The, uh, an the antlers. The antlers uh, that every, every uh, year fell down or, and then grew Or shed up. and then regrown. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it was interesting because in nature there is this sense of uh, died and uh, oh, rebirth. Know, leave yeah. again, mm -hmm. a rebirth again. Right. And it was and really Because rats just keep procreating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. On yeah, it was. It, yeah. But it was. There's no shortage of them. Yeah. Exactly. But in this case, it was it's most true. interesting for the about this part of the mm. body of the deer. Mm -hmm. It was more interesting. But why, for why, me. The, why the why the why the the pairing of the deer and the and the rats? And then I um, I just put it them together because I was interested in create a kind of not properly symbol of this town, but it was uh, interesting for me to to create a, another kind of animal in, mm -hmm. with with these two different bodies. So this is a kind of 
Now I'm a photography. I just, uh, just want to investigate uh, how to do with uh, like photography stuff, but not doing photography. And investigate uh, the narrative inside uh, the text and uh, the image that I cannot uh, take in photographs. This is the point. So uh, that is why I used uh, this kind of medium, which is like inkjet paper and uh, like graffiti uh, markers, because I just want to take this kind of uh, narrative thing and street style. This is a painting and uh, this is uh, uh, compared to the tragedy and uh, the comic that we can find in the, the other narrative thing. Uh, I put myself in a childish way and I think that uh, seeing in something more uh, deeply and poetic it's a kind of uh, hide yourself from the superficial thing of today and of today family. So this is the meaning of the healing force of the universe, which is uh, the name of the black monochrome that I made on photographic paper. This is a work that I made uh, uh, about this color. Uh, it's called uh, the most contested color in the world and uh, well there was a time when I was uh, very very uh, young and I was like five years old and um, I remember that uh, at school uh, we all had crayons and uh, the most contested color there it was like this very fluid pink and so I thought that this could embody some of the poetic and some of the uh, reaching the uh, something else and something more deep. This is the most contested color in the world. So, the, so this is an orchid uh, in a vase. This is the title. And uh, with narrativity, uh, sometimes I work with uh, the deepest uh, uh, meanings and sometimes I like to work on the edge with like superficial and ironic text and in this case I thought that it was uh, very interesting and very f funny in a, in a way to work uh, with uh, this very pure and very refined image and uh, to give the people the thing and the feeling that uh, it was just uh, here before, uh, so I wasn't, I hadn't conceived the whole thing. Hi, Darren. Hello. How are you? I'm very good. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you're gonna 